Hello everyone! Today I'm going to try to share my thoughts on The Prisoner. Since I'm still figuring out what exactly my thoughts are, don't be surprised if this review ends up feeling inconclusive. The Prisoner is a British television show created by and starring Patrick McGowan, who also was executive producer in addition to writing and directing many episodes. It is a single season series, its 17 episodes aired from 1967 to 1968. The Prisoner first came to my attention last winter when I talked about watching The Fugitive. There were some comments that were recommending it, or asking if I'd seen it, which naturally led me to believe that the two shows must have something in common, that there must be some similarity in content or format. So without really doing any research beforehand, which is very uncharacteristic of me, I told my parents, hey, there's this show on Amazon Prime, I guess if you like The Fugitive, you might like this, do you want to watch it? We sat down to watch the first episode, Arrival, and and we realized very quickly that it had nothing in common with The Fugitive. Nothing at all. <laughs> um, it's an entirely different kind of show. The prisoner follows an agent who resigns from his position with whatever secret agency employs him, but before he's able to leave London, he's knocked out and taken away. He wakes to find himself in The Village, a deceptively idyllic prison community where everyone is referred to by a number and kept under close surveillance. Number six, as our protagonist is now called, becomes the primary target of a series of mind games executed by number two, the village leader, the goal being to uncover why number six resigned, to break him, using whatever experimental and unscrupulous methods necessary. The Prisoner is perhaps one of the most surreal things I've ever watched, because its presentation is very serious and straightforward, yet everything that happens is so bizarre, and as the show progresses, it just gets weirder. I can't think of any other way to describe the village except to say that it's kind of like a carnival. A carnival with a curfew, where everybody who works there lives there, there are no visitors, there's no democracy, there are activities you can participate in, shops you can go to, a daily paper you can buy, but everything is a tepid, illusory lie. The identity of number two is constantly changing, as failure to succeed in breaking number six results in replacement, thus the position of leader of this community is like a revolving door. There's a number one, whose identity is kept secret, don't ask questions, attempts to escape or dissent are stopped by a bouncing white balloon thing named Rover that makes a roaring sound and will do this to your face if you don't stop trying to get away. The prisoner is quirky, to say the least. I mean, there were times when my parents and I looked at each other and were just like, what? <laughs> it has some moments that are completely bonkers, and I feel like that's something you should know going into it, because otherwise, <laughs> surprise! <laughs> if I were to graph my feelings toward the show over the course of the series, the line would be up and down and all over the place like a roller coaster. Honestly, when we watched the first episode, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going. It was not what I expected. I was not prepared. I wasn't sure if it was going to be for me. I wasn't sure I could get into it. My dad felt the same way. His reaction was, mm, nope, this is too ridiculous. My mom, however, embraced the quirky spirit of the thing almost immediately and was quite willing to go ahead. So she and I watched episode two, The Chimes of Big Ben, and fortunately, I really liked that one. So we did keep going, and my dad watched episode two after we did, and I guess it changed his mind as well, because the three of us ended up watching the rest of the series together, which was nice. I should mention here that apparently there's some discrepancy as to the order in which the episodes should be watched. For example, I just referred to The Chimes of Big Ben as episode 2, but according to some fans, that episode is actually episode 5. I don't know, I'm not an expert on this show, I just watched it in the order that it was presented on Amazon Prime. Take that up with them. <laughs> 
The protagonist, number six, is kind of the key to the whole thing. He's an outsider, a rebel, and it's through him that the audience explores the madhouse that is the village. His reactions are often our reactions, which is satisfying. He is the one rational, free-thinking individual in the whole thing, unafraid to buck the system and speak his mind. That said, whether it's the character of number six or Patrick McGowan's own mannerisms, I don't know. He can be pretty odd himself at times, and that makes things even trickier when it's like, okay, everybody else is acting strangely, clearly, but he's not 100% himself. I like number six best when we see him going with the flow, acting as cool as a cucumber no matter what they throw at him, no matter what bizarre new scenario he's presented with. He makes a quick study of village customs and masters them to his own advantage. He obliges their society by fitting in, albeit with more than a hint of mockery. He's clever and resourceful, but he can also be charming and congenial, even if it's just an act. The prisoner feels like it's making a statement, but what exactly that statement is, is kind of left up to interpretation. Is it a satire of the senseless rules and regulations imposed on a weak-willed community by a power-hungry government? Is it making a declaration against the invasion of privacy and personal autonomy for the advancement of so-called security? Is it mocking society's love of conformity over individualism? Is it something else? Or is it all of these things? I especially liked the storylines where number six had strong characters to interact with and there was a certain patter to the dialogue and the editing and the drive and escalation encouraged me to embrace the kookiness. Other highlights include the fun theme music written by Ron Grainer, finding out who the new number two was in every episode, and the times when number six would deliver a particularly good zinger. I came to love the butler, played by Angelo Muscat, one of a small group of recurring characters, and I even sometimes enjoyed the feeling of total confusion, like when in the second half of the season they suddenly started changing up the opening sequence so that right off the bat you were disoriented. There were some things I didn't like, though, and if I'm being completely honest, which I should be, it probably works out to about half and half. Half the episodes I really liked, the other half I felt like, eh, I could take it or leave it. There seems to be a general consensus out there that the quality of the show went downhill in the last half dozen episodes or so. I do think there's some truth to that. The two episodes I liked the least were among the final six. I didn't really like Do Not Forsake Me, Oh My Darling, where number six's mind is transferred to another man's body. The episode ended up being kind of dull and used an awful lot of stock footage from earlier in the show. And Living in Harmony, which I guess a lot of people don't care for. I actually thought the setup was intriguing. It's a western show now? Okay. But while the idea was cool, what they did with it wasn't so interesting, and I couldn't stand the annoying antagonist. The girl who was death also partly falls into that category. I hated the first half. The girl's irritating and the cat and mouse game became tedious. But then the second half was a ton of fun. I ended up loving the last 15 to 20 minutes. So I didn't like every episode equally, but the ones I liked, I liked a lot. My favorite episodes of the show included The Chimes of Big Ben, where number six teams up with the new number eight to try to escape. This one features Leo McKern's charismatic number two. Hammer into Anvil, where number six executes a brilliant plan to get revenge on a sadistic number two. It's Your Funeral, which involves an assassination plot against number two. Checkmate, where number six tries to assemble a team and proves too smart for his own good. And the last two episodes, which go hand in hand, Once Upon a Time and Fallout. I'd heard some things about the ending, mainly that some people found it too weird and too surreal and unsatisfying, so I thought there was a good chance that I might not like it, but I also tried to keep my expectations minimal. I've gotta say though, considering what I'd heard and what I'd feared, I thought it was a decent conclusion. Totally wacky and random, but very fun. The last episode attains a whole new level of unrestricted craziness, and when it was over, I didn't know what exactly to think, but I definitely didn't hate it. I was very entertained, I was riveted, and most unexpected of all, 
it really made me want to dance. I did hope for some answers to questions that I'd had ever since the beginning, and I didn't really get them. I just came away with more questions. But even that was amusing. The Prisoner is something different. It's experimental, it's thought-provoking, it's unlike anything else that was on TV at the time, and I don't think there's been anything quite like it since. I had some mixed reactions to it, but given how I feel about the ending and how that makes me feel about the whole thing overall, I think my final takeaway is positive. I would recommend the show, with the caveat that you should know what you're in for, and hopefully this review has given you an inkling. I would love to hear what other people who have seen The Prisoner have to say about it, whether your thoughts are positive, negative, or somewhere in the middle like me, so you're welcome to share your own thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to reading them, and I will be back soon with more reviews. Thanks for watching! Be seeing you!